Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Carrie Watch. So this video is a little different than what I usually do. Zooming in with me today is the ever so passionate CEO of Louis Monet, Jean-Marie Shala. Hi Jean-Marie, bonjour. Welcome back. Bonjour Karishma, thank How you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. And what about you? Not too bad, thank you. How's everything uh, back in Switzerland? Things are improving, you know, day by day and uh, it has been a big impact in Switzerland as well as in the rest of the world, but uh, thank God it seems that uh, we are heading to a much better world now. Mm -hmm. It's not 100% yet, but uh, as I said, you know, businesses are being reopened and the normal life uh, has started to resume, to carry on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So has the production started again in, in your factory? Yes, it has. Okay. Whereas uh, one must understand you cannot uh, go from zero to 100% uh, just like that. <clears throat> so uh, we need to go um, uh, step by step. Right. <clears throat> and now we have uh, reached a level where we can uh, produce, manufacture, assemble for finished watches, <clears throat> but still in limited numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a little quick uh, brief about you. Uh, you've not always been from the, the watch industry per se. I, I know you started off with Perlet and then uh, you had a small stint with Lacoste. Um, and then I think it was 2003 when you decided to take over Louis Moinet. Yes, it was a bit earlier, but uh, yeah, 2001 to 2003. Yes, you're right. Yeah. So what, what made you revive a brand like Louis Moinet and why watches? It had uh, not to do with business per se, <clears throat> it had to do with passion and also with destiny. Mm -hmm. Because uh, my passion has been watches always in my life. So this is what I wanted to do. I would not be a good salesman for, I don't know, real estate or cars because I have a limited interest for these areas. So watches is definitely, definitely something in my DNA. And destiny in the sense that I was not looking for Mr. Moinet. I had the feeling in these years that you have mentioned that he was looking for me. <clears throat> it was a very strange feeling, I must you tell you. You always mention that. You always mention that in all your interviews that he was looking for you. So you see, it must be true. <laughs> I'm not inventing. I'm always yes. saying the same story, yes. <clears throat> So that brought you uh, to Louis Monet and um, it's been, uh, could you talk us through the journey to where you reached, uh, to where the brand has reached today? Yeah, well, initially it was, uh, it was like crossing the desert because uh, I put myself in a difficult situation following my destiny mm -hmm. in the sense that uh, uh, this name was completely unknown and uh, all I had was an eight-page uh, biography. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so <clears throat> this is where I started from. Uh, so yes, I had a big heart, but I had empty pockets. So I really started from my kitchen as a laboratory because I wanted to do these watches. But uh, at that time, I never dreamt of having a company and, and uh, making it big, you know, it was more like a hobby when I started and it was very good because watchmaking has to do with passion. Mm -hmm. Watchmaking has to do with passion and it means when a watchmaker is creating something, he, he must be like an artist. He must be like an artist, he must not be like a businessman. So at Louis Monet, we don't speak about benchmark, about market analysis, about all these things. We speak about creativity. And you can be creative in your kitchen. This is once again how I started and I'm very, very happy with that mm -hmm. because you also learn the real challenge of entrepreneurship mm -hmm. because you have very limited means. If you have, you know, like 100 Swiss francs instead of 10,000, 
it's much harder to make the right decision. Mm -hmm. You must uh, invest your money very wisely. And once again, you must grow step by step your, your company. Mm -hmm. So this was the start. <clears throat> and uh, then I was lucky because uh, thanks to the internet, I found uh, the real story of Mr. Moinet, mm -hmm. which is still hidden. We don't know 100% of his life. But we know for sure that he has invented the chronograph and that he was uh, the artist uh, creating art for the most important people of his time, including two American presidents and the Tsar of Russia, as well as Napoleon and the King of Naples. <clears throat> so this brought uh, the, the brand to a level which was unexpected to me, uh, the equal of Breguet, you know? And uh, of course, it has uh, also raised some um, some new uh, requirements uh, because when we discovered Louis Monet was the inventor of the chronograph, uh, we said, "Okay, now today we must have a contemporary product which is a, a star in this field of chronographs." Mm -hmm. Which was not easy. <clears throat> We came up with Memories, which is our flag, flag, flagship. Uh, and this Memories is a, is a piece that um, it has, we have dissociated the function of the chronograph versus the function of the automatic watch. Mm -hmm. It is the first time it has been made and uh, only the tooling is nearly half a million Swiss franc, you know? So, you must imagine from a blank sheet, we went uh, a long way in these 15 years. Mm -hmm. So also the Memoirs is quite a unique uh, chronograph. I also noticed that the, the chronograph function actually is on the top of the dial. Is there any particular reason for that? The chronograph function is actually, it is, can you, can you see? Yes. <laughs> well, it's vice versa. So let me take it off. So you will see better, I hope. Mm -hmm. Like this, is good? No, no, it's not good. No, like this. Yeah, that way. Yes. So what you have is instead of a watch, you have here a very small watch telling you hours and minutes, mm -hmm. and all the rest in this uh, orange uh, background is the chronograph itself. Mm -hmm. So you know the way it was developed is the contrary of what a watchmaker would do normally. Because normally you do a watch and then the so-called complication, the chronograph, as number two. Whereas here, the chronograph comes first. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but moving on from the chronograph, uh, Louis Monet was also very fascinated with the world of astronomy. And uh, I'm definitely fascinated with the uh, astronomical watches that you have created. In fact, you have fragments of Mars and, and the Moon actually on the watches. Uh, my favorite one before you ask me is the one from Mars. So if you do have it, can you just show us the watch and just talk us through the process of actually where you found those fragments and, and the process of putting it into the watch? Yes, <clears throat> with pleasure. <clears throat> oh, you see, this is a uh... Excuse me. <clears throat> this is a, a Mars limited edition watch, mm -hmm. and um, you cannot maybe not see so clearly, but uh, the background, uh, which is this copper copper face, is a representation of Mars itself with its most famous volcanoes. And here at three o'clock. You have a little sealed container, a high-tech container. It was very difficult to make because I think the watch some... is uh, the other way around, Shomari. Again? Again? <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Is That's it better okay. like this? <clears throat> yes. Sorry about that. That's okay. And in this uh, sealed container, you have a little fragment of mass, mm -hmm. which is a meteorite. <clears throat> that has traveled 56 million kilometers mm -hmm. to reach this watch. <clears throat> so, you know, it's a, it's a, a travel in the cosmos. Mm -hmm. 
that is very unique. Today, human beings cannot go to Mars, but you have to think that this little fragment <clears throat> has reached us. And uh, we have uh, only a limited uh, access to, to these treasures because it's uh, so uh, it's so, so sought after from collectors and museums that we are very lucky. <clears throat> you asked me the question, how did we get access to, to these pieces? Um, my friend Luc Laben is the authority in meteorites. He was one of the first ones that uh, brought to uh, the world some moon meteorites that he discovered himself in the desert of Oman. <clears throat> and uh, meanwhile, uh, Luc has uh, established himself as the authority in meteorites. So for me, it's very important if I tell you a story about this piece, it must be genuine, it must be true. And uh, I only deal with him because he's trustworthy. So the piece comes with all the necessary documents mm -hmm. showing uh, the authenticity of this piece. Mm -hmm. uh, since it's such a unique piece and getting this fragment must not be an easy task. So what is the production uh, of, of pieces like this? We make only 12 pieces in gold and 60 in uh, steel for this small uh, limited edition. Okay, and in terms of your general production at Louis Monet? There was a noise. Would you please repeat? I said in terms of your overall production at Louis Monet. Our overall production yearly is between three to five hundred watches. Mm -hmm. Between three to five hundred watches. We, as I said before, we consider the artistry work more important than uh, than the business work. <clears throat> and uh, actually, it is very good. Uh, because the current situation shows that it has a lot of advantages. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, some of our colleagues, they push, push, push to have a good commercial results. And then what happens? Mm -hmm. The shops are overloaded with uh, watches. And uh, when a crisis hits, like it just did, these watches, they become very old. Mm -hmm. And then people, after the crisis, they will want to have fresh emotions. Mm -hmm. We are not confronted to this because we have this limited edition and it's very it's flowing in the sense that um, we have a limited stock uh, with our retailers only. <clears throat> and uh, the difference between three to 500 normally is uh, royal courts in the Middle East. We are very fortunate because uh, the name of Louis Monet has become an important name. So they respect uh, this name. And uh, we tailor make for them some unique projects for different courts in the Middle East. And then we are fortunate. Uh, some years we got orders for 100, 200 pieces. Mm -hmm. So it becomes our yearly priority. Okay. So you mentioned the current situation that we're in. Um, how has that impacted uh, the whole thought process of people, your customers, uh, Louis Monet uh, buyers? Um, basically, what, I, what I'm trying to say is, how is the thought process of collectors affected by the current situation that we are in right now? Do you see a change in the emotion of people when they want to buy, particularly independent watch brands? <clears throat> um, of course, it's uh, everything is still fresh, and I think uh, things will <clears throat> still uh, keep changing in the coming month. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Yes, I think what we have seen overall, <clears throat> for us, you know, we have been as much impacted as uh, all the other uh, watchmakers. Mm -hmm. So the supply chain has been cut for everybody and the markets were interrupted. There were people, you cannot, you know, if you have uh, health is much more important than watchmaking. So when the world is uh, thinking of health, you cannot disturb the world with watches, as simple as that. So now, once uh, things are better, I think the appetite for emotions will come back and uh, a watch is a testimony of uh, the 
intelligence of mankind is a testimony of uh, culture, the testimony of uh, knowledge. <clears throat> and these values, I think they will be even stronger after this crisis. Mm -hmm. Because now everybody speaks about digital. The world has been reduced to digital. And of course, digital is so important. But digital is not everything. The most important is human being. I would like to sit with I would like to sit with you as we speak, Karishma, and not uh, have this Zoom conversation. And I think this is in our blood. We need to have uh, contact because we are social, uh, social uh, beasts. We have, uh, that's what we need. And the watch, as I said, I think if, if it is genuine, if it is true, I think the watch coming from independence has a very good future in front of us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mentioned digital. A lot of brands are doing a lot of things digitally. You also relaunched your website recently. There is the uh, Louis Moinet Digital Museum and there is the Black Book. So can you talk us through that as well? It was very interesting. I went through it and there's a lot of information that one can get about Louis Moinet. Yes, <clears throat> thank you for asking. When we saw Basel World would not uh, happen, what we did is uh, we decided to set up a digital event <clears throat> here in Saint Blaise at our headquarters. And uh, uh, we called it Discovery Days. <clears throat> and during these Discovery Days, it was not meant to try to sell watches or to introduce our new watches. It was meant to, as a cultural platform, to exchange creativity and to talk to our friends and customers throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So we had many Zoom meetings. <clears throat> and the platform itself uh, included uh, the black book that you have mentioned. It's the story of Louis Moinet from its origin to current day, comprising 100 pages. Uh, we showed its digital edition and now soon we will have a print edition of 3,000 copies only. Mm -hmm. The digital museum is the way to discover the heritage of Louis Moinet, all these clocks he made for the crowned heads throughout the world uh, in a digital way. And uh, it's quite unique and it shows uh, all the the, the, the power of the name of Louis Moinet. Mm. And the new website has been uh, intended to be more modern, of course, to be uh, more adapted to current technology, of course, but also it will serve as, uh, as a way to communicate with our friends and retailers. We don't want to speak to them, we want to speak with them which is a big difference. <clears throat> and we have, I think it is also something that uh, uh, we want to improve in future, uh, not only the website, but we will make a world tour with a very special concept once that uh, we, we will be able to travel again. <clears throat> we will participate to the Geneva Watch Shows, uh, Watch uh, Show, sorry, Geneva Watch Fair, sorry, it's called Geneva watch fair. Uh, watch days. Yes, you are right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this will be at the end of August, mm -hmm. and we will make some um, invitations to a selected audience to visit us here in Saint Blaise with a private visit of the observatory, mm -hmm. which was uh, one of the most important in the world. Not so long away, and it's a piece of history. Uh, invite people to touch the moon and bring them, take them through our museum and have them see the first ever chronograph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think it is also something we should uh, consider in future is uh, the reconsideration of uh, our communication with the world. And I don't want this communication in our case to be um, uh, to be um, dry, you know, to be arrogant or to be um, 
to be uh, how do you say um, uh, or oh, there is a word I cannot find for that I, I, I want this communication to be fresh to be friendly and to be participated great you also have some new watches coming out uh, in June could you tell us a little bit about that yes uh, we have been working <clears throat> for now two years on a very special watch uh, whose name is uh, a space revolution mm -hmm. and uh, it's a special technology it's a different look it's something very very unique so we very much look forward to that and uh, do we get a sneak should... preview? sorry do we get a sneak preview into it not today Kavish, no, no, <laughs> not today I'm sorry, but okay. it's, uh, we'll have to wait. Also, I would like to show you, but also for me, I don't have any sneak preview. <laughs> <laughs> we are still working uh, on the parts. And as you know, even the best computer images, they do not reflect the Absolutely. final watch. Absolutely. Particularly with the space mystery and watches like that, I mean, I, I don't think even images do justice to the actual watch when you see them. It's, it's, it's very interesting. Also, another interesting thing I find is you use a lot of translucent dials rather than transparent dials, which uh, sort of adds a lot of character to the watch. Uh, is there any particular reason that you use a lot of translucent in term, uh, instead of transparent? Yes, because they add some kind of mystery and they kind they add some kind of uh, unexpected 3D effect. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes we like to do to go our own way and um, play with the materials. Mm -hmm. You also have a lot of secrets at Louis Monet, like uh, the Louis Monet, the colors and, and a lot of other aspects that you don't uh, let out very easily. No, you are right. We a, a watch, uh, a watch made in limited uh, editions or one of a kind items, such as the watch we manufacture, <coughs> includes a lot of uh, technology and a lot of craftsmanship. Mm -hmm. This craftsmanship <coughs> can be very, very different. You know. <coughs> If you ask, uh, if you ask ten, um, ten professors at university, how much is two plus two? You will have the same answer. Mm -hmm. Ten people will give you the same answer. If you speak to ten engravers and you ask them what can we do, which is unexpected, which is mysterious, which is special, you will have ten different answers. Mm -hmm. And. This is really, it makes a big difference because all these little details, they produce a special effect. Mm -hmm. And this is why we spend a lot of time actually with our team. <clears throat> and uh, we have uh, very interesting discussions because it can produce a big difference. <clears throat> this weekend, <clears throat> it was, we had a four, four day break this weekend and I took the this time to go to my friends uh, in Geneva and here in Neuchâtel to, to talk about uh, what we will do in future and we will have very soon like a, um, an alchemy department mm -hmm. <laughs> alchemy alchemy you know transform a material into gold which right. is one aspect yeah but alchemy is also about the transformation, not only in gold, uh, but to transform materials, to use these materials and to, thanks to different operations, to give them a completely unexpected look, aesthetic. So this uh, so-called alchemy department has already started yesterday, it was our first day, okay. to work on different concepts and also an astronomy department to study more about uh, the relationship of the man and the world around him to, to understand better what is our relationship and maybe 
incorporate some of these elements into into our culture. Mm -hmm. You also have uh, an interesting watch that you are doing uh, some sort of a collaboration with India. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us about that too and, and what is that collaboration? <clears throat> it's a 150 year old uh, specimen I think that you found from the country, right? Yes, yes. I was very, very happy about that <clears throat> because um, we last year we presented a watch called uh, Only Mexico, mm -hmm. which is a watch incorporating the Mexican uh, DNA. And uh, it was very successful in the sense that really people, they, they liked this initiative. Uh, it was one of a kind item. And uh, I have decided to make one for India will be called uh, Only India and this watch will incorporate a fragment as you said 150 years old uh, of um, something that is very unique in the world actually we we received it we bought it from a museum mm -hmm. the piece that will be incorporated into this watch uh, was uh, traded from a museum. You know museums, sometimes when they have uh, amazing materials, what they do is uh, they have like um, two kilos to make uh, an example easy to understand. They keep one kilo for their own exhibit and they trade the second kilo to get some uh, new materials. Mm -hmm. And this is how we got access to this little, little, little fragment of this piece that makes me so happy because we cannot produce an amazing watch for only Mexico. This watch from only Mexico contained um, a piece of a meteorite called Allende, which is 4.5 billion years old. This is the oldest, yeah, this is the oldest known piece from the entire uh, solar system. Mm -hmm. It is older than the formation of the Earth itself. So. You see, we cannot create an amazing piece for Mexico and then make something so-so for India. It had to be at the highest level. Mm -hmm. And I was so lucky and fortunate to, fortunate to have access to this, uh, to this little piece mm -hmm. that soon you will discover because we have been working. Our engraver has been working even during these difficult weeks because he was alone mm -hmm. uh, at his home and uh, w a workshop engraving. So for this summer, we should have the only India. And as I promised to you, you will be the first one to see it. I look forward to it. I really do. I'm very excited. Like I said, when I, every time I visit you at Basel World, Louis Monet always surprises me. I mean, the, the kind of watches and the products that you actually manufacture, I'm always surprised. Thank you so much. So I look forward to it. Um, so another exciting piece that I, I want to talk about is the 22nd Tempo Graph. It's also one of my favorites. I, I absolutely love the animation of the 22nd uh, on the dial. If you have the piece, we'd love to see it. And if you could just talk us briefly through it. <clears throat> you see, we have in our collection, we have uh, two different uh, product ranges. The first one is called Cosmic Art, mm -hmm. like, for instance, uh, the Mars watch that you have seen before. Mm -hmm. And the second one is called Mechanical Wonders, Mechanical Wonders, such as the Memories we just reviewed. And this is another belonging to this uh, category. Can you see? Is yes. it? Uh, yes, it's clear. Upside down now? No, it's fine. <laughs> So this watch is really beating on your wrist. This is the interesting thing. It has, like the memories, it has a small dial if you want to read the time, hour and minutes in blue mm -hmm. here. Yeah. And then the rest of the watch there consists of uh, uh, the escapement, the balance wheel. Uh, and here you have this, you see, just, just jumped. The, here you have a 20 second retrograde segment. Mm -hmm. So it means that this uh, hand will uh, reach 20 seconds and then jump back and then again jump back. And I'm glad you said that uh, you like it. 
it's uh, I must say it has been very successful for us it is uh, one of our best sellers because I think it is so different and unique and also a watch today is not only to give you the time is also to be a piece of art and this is alive on your wrist this is what makes it strong it's a beautiful animation of time on your wrist and uh, yeah you're right a watch today is more than just a device that tells you the time it's beautiful So uh, Jean-Marie, um, moving away from watches, what is the one thing that you have taken away from the current uh, not so fortunate situation that we're experiencing right now? The world is very fragile and uh, I think it is very important to stick to its own values. <clears throat> and if these values are genuine, uh, if you really what do in life what you have in your heart <clears throat> I think uh, you will always find a way to carry on no matter how difficult the situation is mm -hmm. so so for us <clears throat> I I never put myself in a difficult situation because I wanted to be greedy or I wanted to be uh, you know to have a dream to become uh, the most important man in the trade nothing like that uh, we are a very humble company uh, we behave very in a very humble way the important people are our friends and customers uh, the important thing is um, our product we put a little bit of our soul in our products this is why they have a soul <laughs> themselves <clears throat> And the thing I have learned is, I think it's not because uh, even being small, you must think big. <clears throat> I think this is maybe the lesson for me during this crisis. What does it mean to think big? It means to go beyond the boundaries. <clears throat> I think, uh, look at the world. I have been myself uh, all my life. I went to the Basel world. Uh, thinking it was the most important uh, platform and uh, yes it was the most important platform but now it's no more there so uh, we are like orphans in a way we have to reinvent ourselves we have to to grow bigger we have we are like uh, children without uh, our parents and we must now face the world by ourselves being stronger and pushing the boundaries i think the digital is helping us tremendously to do that absolutely. Uh, sorry absolutely and i i really like the analogy you just said we're like children with our parents and we have to find our way and um, you know make do with the situation that we have actually make the best of the situation that we have right now true 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 great uh, do you have any message for your um, collectors in India? Yes, I want to come to India very soon. <laughs> We'd love to have you in India. I will come. I was supposed to come in uh, March, but of course it did not happen. But I can't wait to come back to India. I have not been to your country for a few years now. The last time it was, uh, you remember, we met in Mumbai. And uh, it was already a few years back, so now it is time to to come back, to have a lot of fun showing the only India watch, mm -hmm. and to have some fun also visiting your beautiful country. We look forward to having you. I just hope things go back to normal soon enough. I also miss traveling a lot. I miss coming to Switzerland. Of course, like you just mentioned, the watch fairs, actually seeing and feeling and, and touching the watches and putting them on your wrist. And it's a completely different experience. I mean, the whole digital experience is fantastic and it's a great alternative, but it definitely doesn't replace the whole um, idea of touching and feeling a watch. It's, it's very different. So I hope things go back to normal soon and uh, we can travel and see each other soon enough. Yes, Karishma. Great. Okay. Thank you so much, Jomari. Um, take care of yourself, stay safe, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the India special watch. Thank you so much. 
Thank All you, right. Karishma. See you. Bye bye. If you like this video, do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on all those cool updates. And if you want me to review any watches, do let me know. Until next time, stay safe, stay home, and stay positive.